All right, I'm really excited to be here with Suzanne Giesman. I've been a fan of her work for a long time, and I'm just grateful that she's uh, willing to share some of her um, wisdom and teachings with us in this short time we have together. Uh, first, let me say hi to you, Suzanne. Thanks for being here. Hi, George. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm a fan of yours ever since I discovered oh. you, so this is great. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I want to just uh, give people some context about your background, and then and then we'll we'll get into the conversation. So. Um, Suzanne Giesman uh, is a former U.S. Navy commander who served as a commanding officer and aide to the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff on 9-11. And today, however, Suzanne provides stunning evidence of the existence of universal consciousness and our interconnectedness. And while, I just want to stop here. One of the things that I love about Suzanne is, well, she's known, well known as a medium, mystic, writer, spiritual teacher. And yet she's one of the most grounded people uh, that, I, that I've met. So I love that she combines both um, you know, earthly wisdom and, and heavenly wisdom. So let me just kind of continue on, on her bio. Suzanne's written 13 books. She's been a keynote presenter for organizations including Edgar Cayce's Association for Research and, and Enlightenment and the Academy for Spiritual Consciousness Studies, the Afterlife Research and Education Institute, and the International Association of Near-Death Studies, IANS, you know, one of the organizations that I've learned so much from regarding near-death experiences. Um, Suzanne has led weekend retreats at well-known spiritual centers like Omega Institute, Lilydale Assembly, Monroe Institute, and Unity Village. Um, she's also written and narr narrated a popular mediumship series of Hemi Sync recordings. And Suzanne, I'm gonna ask you about that later. That sounds really interesting. Suzanne's gift of evidential mediumship has been tested and verified, and her work has been recognized as highly credible by noted afterlife researchers and organizations. So there's so much that I wanna ask you, and I guess the first thing, um, so curious because this is in your bio, that your mediumship work was, was tested and verified. Do you wanna just share a little bit about what that process was like? Oh, yeah. Well, it's interesting because I'm just in the middle of preparing to do a video of evidence of the afterlife. And it brought back one of the research readings I did that I had completely forgotten was scored and verified as thoroughly as it was. Dr. Gary Schwartz is uh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of his work, too. That, that his, his books early on really um, helped me to, to settle into this idea that well, maybe, maybe there's more than just this body and this, this world. Right. right. So he, uh, he didn't know who I was, but his mentor on the other side, a woman he, uh, named Susie Smith, dropped in on me in my living room while I was reading one of his books. Wow. And she gave me evidence and said, you need to reach out to Gary. And so that is, I'll make, I won't go into that long story, but he so trusted the evidence that Susie gave that he had brought me out to the Laboratory of Human Consciousness at the University of Arizona. And we did a whole bunch of uh, research readings there. And then I became one of his stable of go-to mediums. And he would reach out and say, I need you to do a reading. I can't tell you anything about it, but this is very important. And then he would score every single bit of information that came through in the readings. So uh, it's wonderful to have these, these double blind experiments done. And then I've had another uh, organization where they put the skull cap on your head and the wires and they test uh, what you're doing. And it's, it's just been fascinating. I, my biggest goal, no, it's not my biggest goal. My biggest goal is to help people know that their loved ones are truly still with us, that life goes on and that we are far more than this physical body. But the aside, my goal is to bring credibility to mediumship yeah. and that's what the yeah. research part does. It's amazing. And uh, you're doing that with your writings, your teachings, and also you teach a, a, a course um, on mediumship development, maybe more than one, but I know at least, right? right. So you teach yeah. people how to tap into that skill set. Yeah, I people are surprised you can teach that. And that's how I learned because I didn't know my whole life that I would be doing this work. It came about after the death of my stepdaughter. And when I attended a class solely for the purpose of writing the story of the teacher, I discovered in that class methods and processes. And then she pulled me to the front of the room and I brought through a spirit. So ever since that awakening, I have documented what works, what doesn't work, why does it work? And then uh, finally, when my husband 
encouraged me to teach mediumship. I put it all into a syllabus that was guided from my spirit guides and that literally taught thousands of people to connect with their own loved ones, with other people's loved ones. It's, yeah. it's wonderful. Um, I think I first probably heard of you through a podcast interview of some kind. And then I checked out your website. This is amazing. And then one of my clients had actually taken your mediumship class and said it was just the best thing. So that's why I was, I was like, okay. So, but one of the questions that I, that I have, maybe some people as well, um, since so much of your work is guided by spirit, how do you, speaking of testing and verifying, how do you verify that the spiritual guidance is maybe of a, of a more bene beneficent nature or advanced, you know, yeah. wisdom and that kind of thing. Whereas, you know, some people are like, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe there are spirits on the other side trying to trick us. You know? oh, I hear that you know, yeah. frequently, not a lot, but, but first of all, the greatest test is right here by testing it in your heart. And how does your body feel when you, when you hear this wisdom and you, act on it it is is it feel loose and free or is there just a little bit of constriction does it lead to greater benefits in your life greater peace and joy and love it's it's an ongoing discernment do i yes. follow this inner voice or not and then if you're actually communicating with a higher being you ask for a sign do i trust this or not and you and you get beautiful synchronicities but first always give it that that heart and just the gut test yeah yeah there's there's that quote from i think the new testament the fruit of the spirit right it's joy love peace patience etc cetera, etc cetera. i mean it's it's like wow if it's producing that kind of fruit in our life if we're feeling more inner peace we're being more wise and loving uh towards others <laughs> yeah if like, anybody's going to trick me to be more loving to other people i'll take that trickster but otherwise you know if somebody asks you to do harm to yourself or others that's clearly yeah. not something you want to right follow. right yeah it's it's like if it's like stoking your anger or your fear yeah. or things like that so um you have a uh you have this huge body of work now one of the things that you do that you've been doing for years is bringing through i think it's a daily right a daily uh, teaching from uh, your kind of your higher spirit guides. It's called yes. Sanaya Says. Yeah. And it's, it's really what I you know, love, so much to love about it. One, it's, it's very readable. It's very concise every day. Um, and it's also, every time I read, I'm like, wow, that is, that's, that's good. That's really good. That's <laughs> what a great reminder. Or yeah, that's a great perspective. It's all on your Facebook page. So, of course, but, I'll be but, sure to link may that. May I tell you, um, George, that yeah. um, I, I sit right over here every morning and I ask for words that will help someone whoever reads them. And then I post them on my website. It's actually, we changed the name to, instead of Sanaya Says, I think that I put that on Facebook so people know it's not directly me, it's the guides. But we uh, created dailyway.org. And right, so, right. you know, I, we send that out automated by email also besides Facebook. And George, we just came up with a new system. I know that you're, you would really appreciate this. That I, I, didn't, I didn't have a way of keeping track of how many people were subscribing. And we just got smart using technology and started tracking it. And that's why we have this beautiful new format by email. We actually have over 6,000 people get that by email every day. That is so great. Yeah. yeah. And it's dailyway.org. Such so easy to remember. So yeah. definitely check it out. It's free. Um, yeah. And it's just a dose of inspiration and wisdom. Very concise every day. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of these kinds of daily type of things, but I think yours is my favorite because it's, it's, it's always, every time I go, it's like, Oh yes, that's, that's good. That's really, really nice. right on. Nice. Um, so there are so many, um, you know, there's, there's so much uh, right now, you know, what we're recording this during the, the pandemic and there's, there's, there's a lot of passions in many different directions right now. There's fear about, uh, you know, what, what our economy is going to be like. Um, there's fear of course, of contracting the virus and, and all these things. Um, and there's just, it feels like the world has completely changed, you know, in yeah. just a few months. Yeah. Um, any 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 kind of guidance you've gotten about yes, how we move forward in these times, how we relate to these very tenuous and uncertain times? 
Absolutely. And first of all, I have dozens and dozens of videos on YouTube, but if you go and search my name on YouTube and coronavirus, my yeah. guide Sanaya gave us a long channeled message about how to deal with the fear. But what I found in dealing with anything that unsettles us from sitting in meditation daily and going beyond awareness of our human nature to soul away soul nature we just come to realize we get to choose our point of view and when we're unsettled we're caught in the story the story of suzanne the story of george the story of all of us in this pandemic but that's a temporary thing everything passes but in meditation you get to know this state of awareness where there's just peace that's the permanent nature of our true being and when you realize there are two different aspects of us and that you can take that permanent point of view at any time, you look at things with a more neutral, compassionate, detached awareness, and you say, this is very interesting. This too shall pass. How can I bring more peace to those who are in fear? Mm. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, another uh, sort of perspective or, or, or challenge, I should say, from a lot of folks watching this is, um, you know, most of us watching this are small business owners of one kind or another. And, you know, it's, it's impacting our businesses. It's, oh, yeah. um, but, but even before this pandemic, you know, running a small business is always, you know, it's, it's both a lot of opportunity and a lot of creativity, but also a lot of uncertainty. And um, is there any guidance you want to just kind of touch okay. on? And, as you because you're, you're, you also run a small business, so. Right. Yeah. As, as you say that, I got two hits from yes insights. One was being shown the sine wave, that as mm -hmm. many businesses have gone this way, others have truly benefited. Can you imagine the millions that Zoom is taking in right now? You know, that's what I'm Amazon. talking about. And how many people are switching to new ways of doing their work online, yeah. etc. So what I'm being shown is this is uh, an opportunity for people to now say, well, can I truly remake my work, my yeah. life into something that's more in line with my passion. And yes, we still have to make money, but we're forced to find innovative new ways to be. So it, everything provides us opportunities, but they don't always come without discomfort. Yeah. And, and so tell us about a little bit about that. That's a really good, um, I think, important perspective is that sometimes we think, well, gosh, if I'm living a spiritual life, it should all feel really good. I should feel good every day, right? I should be in let, bliss. Let me share you my favorite, <laughs> with you my favorite story, George. I was exhausted after doing too many events in a short period of time. And I said to my husband, I know exercise and fresh air is really great to recharge. We like to mountain bike. And there was a place near our home with these great flowy trails. I said, let's just go for a nice gentle mountain bike ride. So out we go on the trail. I'm getting recharged. But we came to this part of the trail that was a little technical, rocks and roots, and I'm getting bumped around, and I'm getting more and more irritable. And I said, I said, this is supposed to be a relaxing ride. It's supposed to be easy. And I hear this booming voice in my head say, it's a mountain bike trail for God's sake. And I burst into <laughs> laughter and I realized, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm expecting this to be something other than what it is. Mm. And this is life for God's sake. It's not always smooth. There are roots and rocks and bumps and falls, but we get, we pick ourselves up and then you have the flowy parts and it's always going to be that way. I feel our constitution, is it constitution? Whatever, we, we were done a disservice as Americans. It, 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 for those Americans listening to this, we have the right to happiness. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah I, can't, I can't remember if that's the Decla Declaration of Independence know, little, or I'm off, Constitution. I'm up here right now. I'm in this <laughs> <laughs> higher place. Yeah. Gotta, I used to teach political science, so that's kind of pathetic. But anyway. No, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those documents. But, but yes. it, it's, it's true. It's like, yeah, we have the right to, to happiness. And... We're supposed to, and actually, you know, it's interesting. I think just like in the business world, there's this um, maybe uh, illusion that, oh, success means you're making a certain amount of money. Yeah. And if you're only working two hours a week and you're making all this money and that's success, you know, 
Um, I say success is where you're feeling on purpose, that you're seeing the impact you're making, you know, that's success. Yeah. And of course, it needs to be sustainable. But in the spiritual world, mm, success, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I'm, I have inner peace all the time. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm loving the people all the time and all that stuff. Um, but just like you're saying, there are bumps. And I mean, as one example, just a few days ago, I had a, a, fa a thread on Facebook of all places, like a social media thread. And I, I'm, I'm used to social media by this point, of course, but this thread on Facebook that I was involved with got me, triggered me so much that it really threw my inner peace for a day and a half. I was, I was, I was angry. It's genuinely angry. I was confused. I was, and I was like, George, I thought you were a spiritual person. And especially, you know, this, this thread was actually challenging. George, you know, you're not really empathetic. You know, it's like, and, and it's like when, when there's a challenge on my spirituality, yeah. then, then it gets especially, I get especially angry because my, my identity of being a spiritual person is being questioned and all but that stuff. But that's the thing right there. And this is what I was saying. When you get to know there are two different views, I have a little, I find keywords like story. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm in the star, caught up in the story. Okay, I can, you know, step back. Isn't that interesting? But you're right. When you get the chemicals flowing, then you've got to clear the chakras and... It's work being human. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, you have an online course called Let Your Spirit Soar, right? Yeah. Um, tell, us, tell us about it because S-O-A-R, there's yeah. an acronym there. Yeah, I have three online courses. That was the first one. It's really the foundation for the spiritual path. It's not just mediumship. That comes later. This one is powerful because it's, uh, it's a way to connect the dots of so many teachings that we know in the, on this spiritual path, but how to apply them in an instant. So SOAR is an acronym. See the oneness, open your heart, attune to higher consciousness, and reclaim your power. But within each of those modules are so many tools, the teaching, the background. I find it to be a uh, just a beautiful teaching. All of it always comes from my guide. Yeah, so I'm yeah. just grateful. Wow. Well, well in, in it, since we're talking about this kind of higher perspective, maybe we just touch for a moment on what you perceive to be the purpose of why we're here. Now, of course, every individual person has also individual purposes. Yes. Uh, you know, we all have individual challenges, individual kind of destinies, but, but is there an um, overarching purpose that yes. all of humanity shares? Yeah, it mine goes very deep. It's gone deeper the more I sit in meditation. But we really are the emanation of source, the activity of the one mind of consciousness, that if it doesn't arise and be active, it simply is. We're just being. And so after a while, why not have an experience? So we're here to experience everything that life with a capital L has to offer us. And relationships are the greatest way to do that. They can be the most challenging, but there's this evolutionary impulse, you can call it love, to create, to be. And we are created in the image of that one mind that just needs to create. So we're here to produce something more beautiful than that which has already been produced. That's us. So to just learn to love and experience life to the fullest. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's interesting. You mentioned you know, relationships are, are, uh, are a big way for us to experience life and to grow, etc. cetera. Um, I, I, I saw a, a TV show. In that TV show, there was a quote. And that's a famous author. I don't know if, remember who it was. It was like, hell is other people. <laughs> was, the, was the quote. I was just so cynical. And it's like, well, yes, if you are all about you know, getting your way, you're all about just pleasure and your own goals, then other people, of course, get in the way of that. And, but also yeah. heaven is other people when we realize that we're people, spirits, you know, oh, beings, it's like, it's like maybe growth is other people. It's like, that's why other people are in our life. And that's why not everyone agrees with us. Not everyone is going to go our way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I believe it's in the let your spirit soar course where I say that the people you live with are your greatest teachers yeah. after your greatest yeah. opportunities for practicing being a little more evolved than when we came here right 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 if we could if we could achieve that then we've, we've gotten some growth we've gotten some something done in this life you know well, something truly important 
as a medium in connecting daily with loved ones across the veil, they've told me over and over, the first question your guides ask you when you cross the veil is, what did you bring us? And it sure wasn't material goods. It's right. how much brighter is your light shining than when you were born? And you have, of course, daily practices that help you to reconnect and that's let your spirit soar uh, in that course. You, you kind of teach these things, but do you want to- Actually, George, I don't go into my really wonderful method that anybody can use to expand their consciousness in meditation, but that's on my website too, under free meditation gifts and on YouTube. It's uh, seven steps to connecting with higher consciousness. I don't think I had w really come up with that method in the SOAR course. That was the foundation, and then we move on later. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so thank you, and then, and uh, I'm sure I'll put your YouTube uh, video links and everything in there. So what? So there's kind of this journey that you you lead people through. You know, you have this SOAR course, which gives a foundational kind of perspective about life and about spirit, and then people move on to developing their mediumship. Um, capacities. Now, you have this thing that you re recorded with Hemisync. For those of you who don't know Hemisync, it's a very well-known um, kind of tool, I guess, kind of consciousness tool to sync the, the parts of the brain to kind of bring you to a more whole way of, you know, being with, with life. Um, but you've recorded a mediumship series with them. Tell yeah. us about that. Oh, it's wonderful. They asked me to do that. And I said, well, anything we're going to do, it's always going to be better when it comes from spirit. So I channeled the scripts for each of the four recordings in the Hemisync Mediumship series, four different uh, modules. If you bought them, they, they still sell them in CD. <laughs> it's funny. But uh, then I recorded those in a studio and they put the audio tones over it. So these audio tones are kind of like training wheels for meditation, no matter how advanced you are, it adds a different layer. People comment on the reviews online that they have these mind blowing experiences with the tones. So I love that. But they just reached out to me and said, hey, why not put all four of these into now a video course? So I've added more teaching to it and that'll be out in, in a, maybe a month or so because we just wrapped up the filming yesterday. But yeah, I also, so. I find that makes a wonderful adjunct to my making the connection mediumship course online. That's the nuts and bolts, the serving spirit, making the connection course of how to be a medium, how to overcome fears and doubts, the process to connect all of that. But the Hemisync mediumship course is more of how to increase your vibration, how to reach the desired states for mediumship. It all works together, which is great. Yeah, that's really cool. And you also do a monthly mentoring webinar yeah. where you are bringing forth the uh, kind of the, the newest teachings that are coming through you. Um, you answer questions uh, for those who are on the webinar. It's really affordable. Last I checked, it was $25, right? Just to yeah, two, join. Two solid hours of teaching. And yeah. I've so, doing this for two years and my guides have never let me down. They, yeah. they, as soon as one's over, they just start giving me new teaching for the next month. So check it out. Um, well, I'll put the link, but it's your name, SuzanneGiesman.com slash mentor. And it's a monthly thing. It's only 25 bucks. So it's wor really worth you know, interacting with you in that way. So kind of, let me ask you another question that, um, you know, people who are trying to grow spiritually might have, which is, um, do I, well, actually, you know, this like, do I need, how, do, do I need to kind of hear some kind of, do, in, in other words, do I need to be psychic to be able to grow spiritually? <laughs> do I need to be, hearing uh, a voice of guidance in my head or how, how does how does and maybe it's a question i have like how does mediumship psychic gifts and spiritual growth relate to each it's other it's interesting that the mediumship and psychic gifts actually arise naturally when one comes into alignment with the true nature which is love so mm. by practicing presence regularly by having a spiritual practice by realizing I am the light, the psychic and mediumship is here. It just, it is naturally part of that. So it's interesting that some people get these gifts and then that becomes an ego thing, which detracts from the spiritual path. So not everybody who's psychic or medium is totally aligned because once you've got the gifts, they're there 
but then hopefully you come back in and align it and then the connection just keeps opening even more beautifully. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. Um, and how does one know when those gifts are there? I mean, so of course, when some people seem to be born with it, you know, Oh yeah. Since I was a young age, I was able to see or hear or whatever, but then, and then others take your course and they develop it. Right. Um, like sometimes I wonder, gosh, am I, am I psychic? But maybe I just don't know it. Like just take it for granted, just part of my intuition. Some people's, yeah. well, some people call it intuition. Right. Right. Like, yeah, we all have bit, intuition yeah. and we can all learn to open that up. But mm -hmm. psychics are able to tune into the, the energetic field and the thoughts and the, at times, the future of someone else. And mediums do that and take it to another level, which is tuning into people's loved ones. And sometimes you know you can do it because the people show up in your awareness. You actually see them standing here with you. But others don't know they have it until you actually sit down one-on-one -on -one with someone and say, as we do in the classroom setting and even in the online courses, now let me see if I sense your loved one here. And then I teach you how to discern is this my imagination or is this their loved one? We always do that with evidence, verifiable facts that you as the medium couldn't possibly know. And that's what's really changed my life is I could fill you with stories of the evidence. I have lots of um, evidence of the afterlife videos online that just leave no doubt whatsoever. This is real. I have no doubt either because I've, I've seen too many things. I've read so many things. One of the things I've mentioned, Gary Schwartz, early on um and he tested you and he's you know he refers to you so um suzanne thank you so much for the work that you do really i want to encourage people to well there's so many places they can follow you but some of some people are watching this on youtube of course suzanne has a youtube channel and i'll link to that be sure to check that out uh, some people are watching this on facebook suzanne has a facebook page that's very active you have a podcast also um called messages of hope and it's yeah. with uh, Unity Online Radio, and it's a great podcast because you do um, you interview guests that are also fellow spiritual teachers, mediums, etc. And you also bring through your spirit guides into you know answering questions from from listeners. Um, and then you have your online courses, which kind of lead people step by step through your methodology. So um, thank you for the work that you do. Is there anything any send off words that you want to share with us as we complete this? Simply to just trust the path you're on and to know that you're exactly where you need to be right now, but to know that you really do have guides, all of us do. And for me, what really opened everything up for me was realizing instead of wondering, what do I do next? What's my next step? Just believe and trust that there is some higher being listening to you, ready to help you and ask them directly, what is my next step? Show me, please. That kind of interactive direct question all the time, no matter what you're wondering about, leads to really miraculous results. That's amazing. There's no, there's no question too big or too small, right, for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Suzanne, for that. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you all are feeling more inspired and you go and check out uh, the links below or above the video that um, that that you where you want to follow Suzanne and of course you have your dailyway.org email list that shares that really concise inspiration every day so thank you so much for your work Suzanne and yours George you're a blessing <laughs>